Wonder if that'll fix our issue. So I'm taking that 2000 apart again. The one I had a couple minutes ago. Taking all the other crap out. The Denise chip out to test the RGB Pi HDMI thing. And uh, I want to fix these audio and composite video adapters. Quality control is not big at Commodore. Some of these go right in, some of these are on like the biggest angle. Or it's either destroy the connector or use pliers. We need to get this out, this out, this out, and put in these guys from Retrobench. These are gold plated because it does some kind of math or science with the connector magic. I don't know. It just looks a lot better. I don't think these were gold from the factory, but they're going to be gold now. Flux is your friend again. Clean. Maybe we should go the solder sucker route. Continuing on, I'm trying to stay out of the frame. We're going to try and remove some braid from something else here. Now I should solder suck this, I know. But it is a tremendous amount of solder. A tremendous amount. There. It just it comes out just so much nicer that way. Ow. You can even see that, yeah. Hot enough tip and good flux, you'll get good results. Everybody's like, Chris, you waste so much braid. Braiding is cheap. Your supplies are there to help you, just remember that. So, regardless. That's what they're for. And when you're working with large solder and debraiding, you want a high temperature, but don't over temp it. Like, don't crank it to 400 or whatever. There we go. Perfectly clean holes, no damage to the vias. And uh, that's hot. Final big one. This one's going to take a couple passes here. because the braid can only hold so much at a time. You'll see it creeping up the old line there. Alright, getting there. So that's removed and uh, you can grab this piece and I'm going to just heat up ends that might be stuck to the sides here. still see we have a little bit of a there's your connector with all three legs intact a little bit of corrosion on the inside here too I don't know if you can catch a glimpse here of the inside but she's a little rusty crusty dark and uh, that's just from years of having insertions uh. or moisture Moisture can cause that. So, so here we are with our uh, composite video and our left audio. And I have the two new components here. With the holes clean, these will just stick in and they'll actually kind of click. They'll grip the hole because they have a little grippy thing on the end here. And it's just kind of a stability control there. Oh, yeah, and flux on fingers makes it stick. So that's how it will look. We will replace the right audio connector with the red uh, end momentarily. But for now I'm going to remove the center one and we're going to solder in 
Uh, so we're going to be using uh, a rosin core solder, which is a lead and tin. I'm using uh, 6236. I try to use lead solder as much as possible, just for uh, longevity. What do I mean longevity? Look, these are lead solder joints here, and they're doing quite well after 30 something years you know this board was what 1990 and uh, she's still going now this is, is a large solder joint so I do it in two stages I kind of fill and let it settle and then I fill and let it flow and then uh, Again, just refill it and refill it and refill it a couple times. There's a lot of solder on here because it's a high stress joint. So that is one. I'm left handed and I'm sure my pickle fingers will be in the way. We're just going to give it a touch of flux. And we'll do one grip and then I'll do an alignment level. And get over here soldering iron. So with that just kind of tacked in there, I'm going to touch it and liquefy the solder just to make sure I'm perfectly straight as I can be. This might take two points to hit. Like I said, very large solder joint. So that's two. So here is the right audio. It's signified by a black color and the center pin of this is actually missing. I'm going to clean it. So the left and right audio caps are right here and they're showies. They're 30, what, six years old now? So we're going to start with that. Uh, Maybe I'll do these electrolytics first because they're the most simple to replace. One, two. Once again, toss these right on the floor so you step on them in your socks. Still some residual flux on the board there. And then we can trim off our legs, throw them right on the floor so we can step on them later. Okay, so when I first got this board, I told you it's a weird pin hanging out of here. Out of the CIA chip. Yeah, it's the freaking leg of the CIA. It ain't a pin or a wire. It's not even touching. So whoever put this CIA in just just jammed it in and just bent the living crap out of it. And oh my god. I don't know if I'm gonna fix this without breaking it. So let's first try and twist it around and carefully bring it back. I should use some heat. I'm afraid to. Huh. There you go. There's a fixed leg. Carefully. One of that will fix our issue. Doubt it. Okay. Let's keep on keeping on. So, audio circuit. Left audio goes from the, yeah, I can see that now, the RCA jack into a uh, 390 ohm resistor. Ouch which is R244, then through a ceramic uh, 0 0.1 microfarad, picofarad, uh, microfarad, CU, uh, C244, then through resistor 1K, resistor R243. They're all in the same 1, 2, 3 right next to each other, uh, which is in this area right here, these three. And from there it goes to LF347 pins 2 and 3. Right there. It's the tiniest little turd. Hi, welcome back to Funland. So, this is uh, KitKad, K-I-CAD. Uh, it's for Linux, and it reads Gerber files really well. doesn't show traces, though. So, it's just a board schematic. Sprint layout will actually teach you the path, so you can check connectivity for where things go. Okay, I think I got it. It's called Highlight Net. 
this is the pin that was broken. Ground. How do I unclick? Not a fan of this program. Plus note, right audio is fine, left audio is toast. Left audio is the same audio that was soldered to the case and everything was all messed up with the connector. I'm going to have to go through all the circuit and find out where the problem is. This CIA ground was broken off. Um, we may, Not broken off, but bent pin insertion wrong. I uh, managed to fix that. It's in uh, just running my basic hard drive thing with a PC floppy disk that was converted to the Amiga format many moon ago in a previous video. Uh, it actually boots faster than an Amiga drive because it spins faster. Anyway, I'm going to go through this whole circuit, figure out what's going on with the left audio, and I will report back. I don't want to bore you with this because this video is already long enough. It's been a couple hours. Um, it was a busted trace on a capacitor out of uh, hold on, this is pinball fantasies and so everything's working fine now. I do have a little bit of feedback in the err, uh, but I think it's this Chinesium HDMI SCART thing because I plugged speakers up directly using this thing where I do RCA to RCA to that little plug that goes into it. And in here it's fine. So it's playing fine. This is also using the PC floppy drive that I converted back. Runs pretty quick. Removing the capacitor, they soldered a trace that was broken to the leg of the capacitor. When I removed the capacitor, which was a 35 volt, not a 16 like it's supposed to be. That's a word, supposed to be, S-P-O-D-A-B-E. And uh, when I removed the capacitor, it therefore removed the trace. And when I put the new capacitor in, I didn't know about the broken trace. I then did some old multimeter stuff, found out that it was uh, not putting out the correct voltage, it was doing a negative 12. So I undid the bottom part where I did that ground crooked because that was a negative 12 capacitor and I don't know why, but two negatives make a positive and there you go, that's some math in there. No, but uh, the broken trace to one of the resistor legs, which was the audio out, and that was on the left channel and boom, started working right away. Everything was clear. It was a little low, but then I realized that uh, this thing has a tendency to like do what it's doing now. And because the power cord's right here, so it always just pops out and that's apparently where audio is. And that's just this. I guess I could have went back to the Pi to RGB for further testing, um, but I had to do some magic with RCA cables and cabling. And whenever you're working on something, you know, it's just a flipping wreck. I mean, you just, you just end up piling parts all over the place and that's just a small taste I have a whole table right here against the wall where the solar power stuff is and and all it's just like it's just it's just getting there so we're just, we're piling up again I wish I was still on the other side with the pink stuff I just had more room I have a big shelf right here I don't know I'll get there I have to uh, declutter I have to move three times in order to move once if that makes any sense I gotta move two rooms full of junk to move one clean and then move all those other ones again twice to get the junk where it was over here. I have too much Amiga stuff is the problem. But I can't stop. I gotta save them all. And uh, that's where you guys come in. So this is now repaired again. She got herself a 314 ROM just like the other ones do. I got a bunch of 3.1s also. Um, yeah, that's what I got for now. I think I have another 500 that I have to fix. I might do the RGB thing in that. Uh, because the big box Amigas, we got the video cards and all sorts of other magic that we can do to them. Uh, these are just 500s on crack with expansion slots and DMA so you can have more than one Zorro card than a 500 can. And that's that's cool. So we're working again. She boots because I have to do a sacrificial thingamabobber and it's just weird how it's sitting in between two pin headers. I'm going to check for some cold solder joints and some other crap, but yeah, she's wore out. She's just been in and out so many times. Ah. She has no more walls of copper left. It's just barely anything. I could do some continuity testing, which I 
I said I was going to do, but then I put it down and forgot about it. So I'm going to hold on to this and stick that right there. I'm going to put it on the beep beep so it is set. And I'll get my button gear and do that right after I cut this off. Just a bad job from previous repair. We do have our three new uh, jacks in the back for RCA. The video left and right audio and they're all functioning. I did not test composite video. So I'm just going to pretend that it works. I don't think I've ever tested it. So it may not have never worked. I'm pretty sure it does. There we go. So that's all wrapped up. Omega 2000, number four, I think. Uh, all repaired. Don't have a battery in it yet. Don't know when I can put one in. I'll Maybe I'll buy another connector and we'll do something with it. I was really hoping to get the Super Turbo 28 working, but I'll have to do that a little later off camera. Um, I have to dig another 2000 out in order to test it, and then I don't know if that one even works. The only working 2000s I know of that I have are this one and the Vampire 2000. The others I have not touched in 20-something years. They all have the batteries in them, but, you know, when you let stuff sit, I have to check caps and I have to check power supplies and things like that. So I know this one works. I know the Vampire one works. I'll check the... Super Turbo and the Vampire after I take it all apart. Thanks for watching. We have another upgraded, repaired, and sort of cleaned Amiga 2000 number four. And that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something.